You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 4th of October and I'm Roland from Milford. Domestically, the key news was the shock resignation of New South Wales Premier on Friday. Gladys resigned given the ICAC officially launched an investigation into whether she engaged in conduct that breached public trust. This is specifically relating to funding reservations made to the Australian Clay Target Association in 2017. CoreLogic released Australian housing price data and home values continue to charge higher. Across Australia, they increased 1.5% month-on-month, taking annual growth to 20.3%, which is the fastest pace of annual growth since 1989. The Aussie government also announced the intention to reopen the international borders in November. Individuals will be able to travel once their state's vaccination rate hits 80%. Global energy shortages are continuing to worsen, with some now referring to it as a global energy crisis drawing parallels to the 1973 oil crisis. This is of course very different to 1973 in a number of ways, however the outcome of surging energy prices is the same. Thermal coal prices, for example, have reached US $218 per metric tonne, up 27% in the past month and up 270% in the past year. Natural gas prices are also up significantly, up 19% last month alone. This is flowing through to energy prices, particularly in Europe, where day-ahead prices have tripled from 50 euros per megawatt hour to 150 euros, an all-time high. Now, there are a huge many factors that have stoked this crisis. However, given Europe is going into their cold winter months, it's unlikely to improve anytime soon. Now, turning to equity news, this energy issue is proving to be an opportunity for certain companies. Whitehaven Coal, for example, rallied 28% in September. Yan Coal Australia was also up 25% in September and was up 12% on Friday alone. Optus, the telecommunication company, announced the sale of a 70% stake in their towers to Ozsuper. The transaction valued their assets at $2.3 billion, or on 38 times last year's EBITDA. However, they will be building another 565 towers, which will reduce the multiple to 28 times, which is bang in line with what Telstra achieved earlier in the year. Globally, equity markets took a bit of a wobble last week, with most claiming rising bond yields in the US was the key culprit. Turning to the week ahead, the market will be focused on negotiations in the US around the need to raise their debt ceiling. Janet Yellen, the treasurer, has estimated that the US government will run out of funding by the 18th of October. As a reminder, the debt ceiling is a limit to how much the federal government is authorised to borrow. In addition, US non-farm payrolls will be released on Friday and this will be very closely followed to see how the economic recovery is faring. The market is expecting about 460,000 jobs to have been added in September. Domestically, fund managers and analysts will be busy working through the myriad of IPOs expected to hit the Aussie market over the next month, with 24 new companies to start trading between now and mid-November. Now that's just the list of confirmed IPOs and there will be plenty more hopefuls in the pipeline. Thanks for listening, we'll see you next week.